In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christos Anisti. Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing eternal life. Just going to go over one verse today, but it's a really important one. It's one of the first ones that we read in the Gospel. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 23. John 16, 23, it's an important one because some people have asked, why have we added at the end of the Lord's Prayer through Christ Jesus our Lord? It's because of this verse that we ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. When we pray, We pray in the name of Jesus Christ because we are in communion with Him. And when we are in communion with Jesus Christ, our will corresponds to His will. And that's what we want. We don't want our own selfish will. So what we, what we ask for exactly is what Christ wants to give us if our wills are in communion together. And the beauti beautiful thing about the Orthodox Church is that prayer does not have to be made in the name of God the Father only. Now Christ himself showed us how to pray. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. So that's directed to God the Father. Or he himself, when he prayed, he said what? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, I commend my spirit. Father, the hour has come. So he taught us how to pray to God the Father. But here, the Lord teaches us that we can also pray in the name of God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. We can pray in His name. And of course, after Pentecost, we learn that the Holy Spirit Himself may, makes intercession for us and that we are instructed to be praying always in the Spirit so that we can also pray to God the Holy Spirit. And we have that prayer in our third hour Agbeya uh, prayers. You know, when we say, what do we say? We talk about the descent of the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to be renewed within us. We ask Him to renew Himself in us. So we can pray towards the, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So the Orthodox Christians, we pray without ceasing, with faith, in the name of the three persons of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Our relationship with Jesus Christ determines our relationship with God the Father. If we reject Christ, then naturally we will not find God in heaven, the Father in heaven. If we believe in Jesus Christ, we commune with Him, we follow Him, His commands, and we do good deeds, then we become sons of God. We become sons of light. We become sons of the resurrection. Getting back to asking the Father in my name, most of us at one time or another have asked earnestly for certain prayers, petitions, things that have faced us, and we've asked the Father in the name of Christ but we haven't received anything. And then we get discouraged. You know, we have a, an, a, an upcoming exam, like the bar or the MCAT or the DAT or the AP exams, or, or we're asking for the speedy recovery of one of our family members that was stricken with cancer or had heart surgery or had been in a, a car accident. Or we ask for Mr. or Mrs. Wright because we finished our schooling, we become mature, we're well established, and we want to settle down. And then nothing comes our way. Even Apostle Paul prayed fervently that the thorn in his flesh be removed, and God didn't allow it. He allowed Paul to continue to suffer with this pain to keep him grounded, to keep him in, in check, and to keep him from being exalted so that he doesn't fall into the sin of pride. So whenever we make requests of God and we're not granted that request, one of two things. Number one, 
It could be contrary to what's beneficial to our salvation. That we already know. It could be contrary to our salvation. Um, sometimes we ask for success. Sometimes we ask for money. Sometimes we ask for fame. Sometimes we ask for recognition. These kinds of things can detract us from the kingdom of heaven. And so God will not allow it, even if we pray fervently. The second thing is maybe we ask for those things that truly are beneficial to our salvation, but because of our sinfulness and our evil lives and our hard-heartedness, we may misuse them or take advantage of them being granted to us. Like maybe if I, if I do really well on an exam, by God's grace, I'm going to fall into the sin of self-pride. Rather than attributing glory to God, I'll attribute it to myself, and that's to my downfall. Or let's say I've been sick for a long time, and I was healed suddenly. That's a good thing, right? But what if it leads me to go back to a sin that I was involved in before? Then that's not good. Then maybe, maybe God should have allowed me to continue in my infirmity. Or maybe I'm really praying for that perfect spouse to come my way, and I know who she is because she matches up with me. But if I get married now, maybe I'm too young. I don't know my head from my feet. I don't have my future secured. It's not the right time. We're going to fall into all sorts of complications in the marriage. And God knows that because God sees all. And sometimes we pray for other people, certain sinners who have been misguided, let's say yet our prayers are not being answered for them. And it may not be because of what we've done. It may be because of their own obstinacy, because of their stubbornness, their hard-heartedness, their unpreparedness, their sinfulness. So they are not ready for these prayers to be answered on their behalf. Now, sometimes we ask for things that are entirely related to salvation, yet we don't immediately obtain what we ask. We don't get it right away. Our prayers are answered, but they're postponed to the future, much later in the future. Why? Because God, who is infinite and limitless in His wisdom, has a master plan for all of us that He can see before His eyes. Through failure or success, through tragedy or blessing, through mishap or fortune, God has a divine plan that's been written out for each of us individually, and you better bet that it's a good one, because nothing bad comes from the beneficent. Of course, we are not wiser than Him, and to question His wisdom is to question our faith altogether. So we should note that also, when we pray for the salvation of sinners, even though God does not bestow or grant our requests, at least at the time, God will grant us a reward for our generosity. He will grant us blessings for our thoughtfulness, that we even took the time to pray on behalf of these sinful people who might be in trouble. So I hope that we constantly pray for one another as individual members of the body of Christ. This is our calling, is to an understanding so that we can continue to do what's favorable in His sight and that we can combine our will with His will so that what we ask for is truly what He wants to grant us that would benefit our salvation and glory be to God forever. Amen.